Hello, I'm Peter Kenworthy. And I'm Jennifer Nyman Julia. And this is Almost Live, a weekly show designed to help you find out who's who and what's what in Telluride and Mountain Village. Jen, first of all, let me just say thank you very much for coming on as our special co host, guest co host. And it just seems like really just a matter of days ago that you were on this set yes. as a guest. <laughs> I love being here, Peter. Thank you so much for having <laughs> well, me back. Well, we can't get enough of you. Hey, Thanks. we've got a really, really cool show lined up for this week with some very special guests. But rather than me sort of bumbling and fumbling my way through remembering who they are, I'm going to ask our producer and unsung hero, Tim Johnson, to help us out. Tim, who are our guests this week? Our guests include Andy Kruger, who's going to give us the lowdown on the snow sculptures up here in Mountain Village. Claudia Garcia and B.B. Bischoff from the San Miguel Resource Center, who are going to talk about the upcoming Chocolate Lover's Fling. And theater set designer extraordinaire Buff Hooper is going to give us his Telluride story. Wow, that's a cool lineup. Very cool lineup. And Tim, tell me this, do we have some special segments this week? Can you help us out, let us know what they're going to be? This week's show is jam-packed with special segments showcasing the Telluride community. We've got Patrick Legans, the Wine Geek Food Freak, cooking up a dish. We're going to do some Downward Dog with Yoga with Barbara. Uh, we're going to check out Device Advice from the Wilkinson Public Library, do a workout with Fuel Up. Uh, we're going to check out Free Enterprise with Zoe Donnell, and also a report card from our student intern, Jimma Andrew. We're also going to have some live music, the Floozies at the Sheridan Opera House, and uh, speaking of live music, we're going to go over to the Warren Commission with uh, Warren Gilbreth, who is filling in for Catherine Warren this week. everyone. Here I am with Warren Gilbreth, local musician and entertainer. Thanks for having me, Peter. Thanks for joining us. Thanks oh, yeah, for, of course. Thanks for standing in for Catherine Warren, who usually does the Warren Commission. Yeah, a nice little segue, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to have two Warrens around. Right. <laughs> so you, uh, you're you going to tell us what's going on in the music and entertainment world here in town for this week? Yeah, we've got a killer lineup of local and uh, out-of-town yeah. entertainment. Uh, and let's get it started on Thursday. I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Hope you all don't mind. Uh, Thursday at the Phoenix Bean, 6 o'clock, Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Bean, Telluride Gold Kings, a uh, great local band. Uh, then right next door at the Sheridan Opera House, or excuse me, the Sheridan Old Bar is Trico. 8 o'clock there. Uh, down the street at the Liberty, uh, you will see Iceman Special at 8 o'clock as well. But what's really cool on Friday uh -huh. is, you know Tom Nading. He's, your friend. Yeah. He's your friend. He's, He's your partner. friend. He's my friend. He's my partner, yeah, yeah at, the, at the music shop. Uh, he's been putting on this great... Bluegrass Jam at the Phoenix Bean, uh, and he's kind of been taking local talent um, and just kind of throwing us chord charts and seeing what we can do mm -hmm. in two and a half hours. It's been a ton of fun, great covers, songs you may not know, songs you will definitely know, and a great uh, lead-in to the headline that night at the Sheridan Opera House, which so, is Trout Steak Revival. So, so help me out here, uh, Warren, because I'm not a musician, okay. and I'm not necessarily up to speed with all the terminology, yeah. but is this a jam, like a bluegrass jam? Not so much a jam. It's very organized. You know, the j okay. jams tend to be more of like a... Spontaneous. Um, spontaneous yeah. and tend to kind of last longer, uh -huh. like 10-minute songs. These okay. will be nice, tight, okay. concise kind of arrangements. Cool. Uh, anything from My Morning Jacket to Norman Blake. Okay, uh, cool. A lot and this, of fun and stuff. this is happening every Friday at the Most Phoenix Fridays Bean? at the Phoenix Bean. And okay. the Phoenix Bean, uh, just love seeing them uh, really having a great place for yeah. local talent. Yeah, I venue. think that's been great. Yeah. yeah. And then moving along to Saturday, I'm going to cheat here. Wagner Skis is doing their second Saturday block party with the Alley Venable Band. Nice. That's from 3 to 5 o'clock, uh -huh. and it's here in Mountain Village at the uh, Wagner Plaza. Right. But after that, get on the gondola and head back down to town at the Phoenix Bean, where you can get another shot of seeing the Gold Kings. They'll and be playing and from the Gold 6 Kings, to 8. Just for, for anybody that doesn't know, especially if you're a visitor, this is a, a band of locals. We've got Steve Green, we've got Ashley Bowling, we've got Neil Marlins, and there's yeah. a fourth, and I'm trying to think who it is. I know who it is, and they're going to kill me if they see this. I don't remember, <laughs> but oh well, there is a fourth. On yeah, the there base. is a fourth. You should go and find out who the fourth <laughs> that, member is. Go. That's what I would do. Uh, and then uh, 7.30, San Miguel Resource Center's Chocolate Lovers Fling is going to start at the Sheridan Opera House, and, and then down the street and is... We'll, we'll be hearing more about that on this show. Oh, excellent. Yeah, we've Great. got a couple of 
couple of ladies in from the San Miguel Resource Center talking to us about that wonderful organization yeah. and that wonderful event. Well, and who's not a chocolate lover? Everybody. <laughs> yeah, so then down the street is Spectacle at 8 o'clock. I'm sure that'll be a fun little dance party. Sunday's going to be interesting. You've got two pretty different options at the Sheridan Opera House, 8 o'clock, the Duat Project. Oh, yeah. Which I'm, I'm sure is going to be great. Yeah. I always tell people when they come into the music shop, like, it doesn't matter who's playing at the Opera House. Just go. Just it's go. It's awesome. And this one sort of reviews the history of doo-wop. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I've been hearing about it on uh, CPR because they're, yeah. they're doing a tour of the state. I yeah, think. It's, it sounds like it's going to be a great time. If you can't make that, though, there'll be another great show up here in Mountain Village at Club Red. Samantha Fish with my buddy A.J. Fullerton opening up. Do not go there late, Telluride. I know you guys like to get there late. Check out A.J. He's a phenomenal blues finger picker. I guarantee you'll like it, especially nice. if you're into guitar like oh, cool. we all are. That's going to be a great show. Yeah. And then uh, Monday... At the Liberty, Zach Deputy starting at 8 o'clock. Fun fact, last time he was in town, I sold him a baritone Dan Electro guitar. It's bigger, it's tuned lower, and I think it's the perfect guitar for Zach Deputy. So if you see Zach playing a big red guitar, it used to be mine. Nice. And thanks for buying it because I was able to buy a banjo. <laughs> Which leads me into my next one. On Tuesday, Telluride Music Company does a bluegrass jam. It's BYOI, Bring Your Own Instrument. Uh -huh. uh, and this is more of a community event, not so much a, a, hang, uh, a place to hang, more of a place to learn how to play bluegrass and folk songs. So, so this is right at the store? Right, right at the store. Right six, at Telluride Music. Yeah, 6 o'clock. Um, we close at 6, but we, we let people in. And yeah, if you want to learn how to play banjo, sing, Harmony, whatever you want to do, it's a great place yeah, with a great cool. environment of Good. people. Yeah, I think. check it out at Telluride Music, which is just west of the courthouse, couple, yeah. couple of couple of doors west. The only one that says three 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 on it, and it blows my mind how many people walk into our shop thinking we're the pharmacy. I tell them we are, but, you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. You got good medicine in there. <laughs> yeah, it's great medicine. Yeah. Uh, David Nunn is playing earlier that day at the Old Bar at 4 o'clock. Another good local, yeah. local guy to check out. And then Wednesday, I've been super excited about this show since Tom and I kind of worked it. Uh, worked it up. The music store has collaborated with the Sheridan Arts Foundation doing a songwriter showcase. We've had some great talent come through mm. uh, the, the show bar down underneath the opera house. Uh, and we're so excited to have Alex Paul. He won the Blues Challenge at Blues and Brews two years ago and his band the birds of play have been touring yeah. all over the west yeah. coast and have been getting a lot of great yeah. um it's a great acclaim yeah they're, they're a ton of fun uh i love how they you know they'll the, in between songs they have to tune and they encourage the art uh, the audience to to caw and make bird songs and nice. it's just a ton a ton of fun great yeah. environment and maybe i'll play some banjo with them when we're there wow that's so. a big lineup a great lineup support local music uh, that's what makes Telluride awesome. That's why I fell in love with this place as a youngster. So please go out and support local music. Perfect. Warren, yeah. thank you very much again for standing in for Catherine. Yeah. Really good job. Thanks, Peter. Really appreciate it. And now we're going to join our favorite local chef, Patrick Legans, the wine Ooh. geek food freak, who's going to show us nice. how to make ahi, jalapeno ahi. That sounds delicious. Very exotic. And then yeah. uh, we'll have Barbara uh, Glanzing giving us yoga with Barbara, doing the downward dog. So stay tuned, Looking everybody. Looking forward to it. Hi, I'm the Wine Geek Food Freak, Patrick Legans. Today, I had a nice piece of tuna, so I want to show you a fun thing to do with that. So I just diced up some sushi grade ahi tuna, put that in a bowl, some shallots, some avocado, some lime juice, and I have these jalapenos over here I've been soaking in rosé wine. So good. I'm going to put a touch of olive oil, a little gluten-free soy sauce, always do that for your gluten-free friends. A pinch of salt and a pinch of sugar, believe it or not. And then I just mix this together. And then I like serving these on spoons. Kind of a cool little presentation. Put that right there. Delicious. Until next time, remember all you need is good ingredients, some care, in a minute of your time, and you can eat like me, Patrick Legans, the wine geek, food freak.
Hello and welcome to this mini yoga series in Telluride, Colorado. My name is Barbara Glansnick and today we'll be looking at Downward Facing Dog or Adho Mukha Svanasana. One of the many sort of classic yoga asanas. This mini series is really designed to provide you with some easy stretches that you can do throughout the day, especially when you don't have a lot of time. As always, I really want you to focus on your breath. So we're gonna inhale and exhale through the nose only. And also really honor your body and where you are today. So really move with care. All right, let's get cracking. So I want you to come down and lay down on your bellies. <clears throat> Whether you use a yoga mat or not, doesn't really matter. <clears throat> I want you to point the toes, reach your hand underneath your shoulders, and then curl your toes under and on an inhale, push up onto all fours. Now, try not to move your arms and legs as you reach your seat back towards your heels. Allow your head to sort of fall and you gaze in the direction of your legs, then you probably have to move your feet a little wider. And you can already stay here. I sometimes call this like a mini or puppy dog because at the end of the day, you have a very similar um, primary action, which is spinal extension. If you're ready to go further, I want you to really press into your hands and feet and then on an inhale, slowly, 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 you're gonna extend your legs. Stay here with bent legs for a few breaths. Maybe your hamstring flexibility is not that great at the moment, so for you to extend the legs completely is not an option, which is totally fine. You get the same primary action. If you can extend the legs, great. Spread your sit bones and lengthen throughout the entire spine. You can stay here for five to 10 breaths and then come onto your knees, reach your weight forward and lie down again, point the toes, reach your arms back and allow your shoulders to fall forward. You can repeat this motion many, many times and really get reference points in how to do a downward facing dog correctly. All right, thank you so very much for practicing with me today. Have a wonderful day. Namaste. My name is Adam Singer. I am one of the owners of Liberty. Uh, we are a bar lounge here in downtown Telluride. And this is a great space. It's comfortable. You know, the lighting is great. The atmosphere is fun. We have like 30 wines available. We have some very high-end wines by the glass even and champagne. And we have a specialty cocktail menu, draft beer. So a little bit of everything that we try to accommodate. You know, we want to be approachable. You could come in and have a $3 PBR and you can have a $300 bottle of Dom Perignon if you want. This is a band or a DJ almost every Friday and Saturday, so there's a lot of live entertainment and a lot of fun. There's always something happening here. And that was the lovely Liberty. And speaking of lovely, we have a, <laughs> we have a lovely guest, Mr. Andy Kruger. Yes. How, how are you? Oh my gosh, what a great day to be here with you, Jen. Oh, it is a great day. Yeah. I'm so glad you're here. Outstanding, yep. Tell us, please, what you are up to with Sculpt Fest. What is going on? Oh my gosh, what a great deal. So I used to do this event uh, from 2004 to 2014, mm -hmm. where we did uh, four to six sculptures, big ones actually, pretty darn big. Yeah. They're uh, eight foot by eight foot by eight foot cubes of snow that we compact. Right. And uh, we make these massive structures and then we get people to come out and sculpt and we get all kinds of friends and beginners and experts and all that kind of stuff. But it's really just a big fun thing to get people out and doing something for, well, locals and also our visiting community. I love it. And what a wonderful way to combine natural elements of our snowy world yes. and, and artistry, because those are really two of the best things about Telluride. Well, we live in a ski town, you know? I mean, yeah. how do we not have this is yeah. why it really came together. Right. So, so glad it did. Yeah. Tell us about what's going on this year with Sculpt Fest. Well, let's see. We just kind of 
resurrected it basically a friend of mine says you know how come you don't do that anymore yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was like oh well, you're right man how come i don't do this anymore so we got kind of at the last minute pulled it all together in november and uh, i was able to get a couple of teams together and uh actually geez what a great story that is we had molly and brooke who work at the telluride arts yeah and they just latched on and says oh my gosh we want to do this and i says yes you want to do this <laughs> and i can talk people into a lot of things that they don't normally want to do that's a good skill that's an excellent mm -hmm. kind of a fun thing yep. and they pulled off a fantastic sculpture up in mountain village right outside of the gondola as it goes out to the um well, front the bottom of chair four. It is so good. You've seen it? Yes, I've photographed my children in front of it. Tell us about how well, that came to be. It's very, it's a timely piece as well. Well, it is a timely piece, yeah. and the ladies, they came up on that idea all on their own. Obviously, uh, I don't really direct anybody to do anything unless, you know, we've done a sculpture for Subaru before, mm -hmm. or uh, we did one for... Good Morning America, mm. back when we used to do satellite truck stuff. Right. So it's this gone. One, yes, this, this one. one is, what is it? What is, this, what is the sculpture of? She came, the girls came up with this great idea because of the fires down in Australia. Right. They wanted to do a koala mm -hmm. and uh, they so pulled cool. it all together. And it's a really nice, massive structure and it's held up very, very well. It has. Yes, and they didn't. My favorite thing is they did the fuzzy ears. They were able to come up with the way to make their ears fuzzy. How do they do There's it? A, you, you know, it could be a trade secret. I may not be able to actually disclose that, but uh, my the rumor is is that one of the, somebody worked or knew a friend at a restaurant and got one of these great big spoons that you like stir, like, you know, a cauldron or something like that, this right. massive spoon and they <laughs> made these little fuzzy ears, yes. uh, textured it. Yeah. So it turned out awesome. Yes. And little nose and the tail and little, little feet. So, I have seen dozens and dozens of people you have seen dozens stopping and looking checking it out from all sides because there's the cute back end to a yes. little tail and people t having their family photos taken in front of it well that's why i do it exactly and you did mm -hmm. it with your family yeah that is well, so nice I, well i just think you know you're just you're um you're enlivening our community even more it's pretty lively but you're bringing more to the yes land. exactly so people there's mm -hmm. just a lot of different things that we can add and it makes it a lot of fun and they're up for a couple of weeks and we have another sculpture here at uh, the top of um chair one at sunset plaza that oh, the okay. telluride mountain school high school kids did and some of the younger kids all participated on it and it turned out super nice and um i'm gonna go check that out today guy, yeah, please do. Yeah, I will. And uh, there you have it. Thank you so much, Andy, for being here with us today. And I'm just so excited for more. We need more Sculpt Fest. We're going to do it next year. Sculpt it up, but don't have me because it would be a mush pile. Oh, my gosh. Good. Contact <laughs> me. There's probably operators are standing by to take your calls. To take your call. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much, Andy. So now we're going to get some device advice from Wilkinson Public Library. My name is Gloria Chavira. And I'm Hank. And you are watching Device Advice, brought to you by Wilkinson Public Library. Today, I'm going to share with you, we have snowshoes at the library. We've actually had them for a while, but I want to remind you that we have them. And we have them in three different sizes, men, women, and child size. So come check them out. They're free to borrow. If you do decide to take some of our snowshoes out, it's a great idea to check Colorado Avalanche Information Center's website or mobile app, which you can find in the App Store or the Android market. It's free and it gives you up-to-date information on avalanche danger here in the northern San Juan Mountains. Thanks Hank. Safety is very important. That it is, Gloria. <laughs> Thank you for watching Device Advice. Brought to you by Wilkinson Public Library. Hi, I'm Becca. And I'm Ryan. This is Fuel Up. So today, we're going to move through an upper body circuit. In the past, we've given you core, we've given you lower body, so we got to balance things out. Again, you know our familiar format of 30 seconds of work and 30 seconds of rest. 
core exercises. You can move through this circuit, I would say two times if you're a beginner, four times if you're an expert, somewhere in that range. So our first exercise is, is a pushing exercise, kind of a substitute for a bench press, also with some core activation. So Becca, you're gonna get down on your back, on the floor. And this is a variation of a dumbbell bench press. What we're gonna do is alternate our pressing. She's gonna activate her abs, lift her legs off the ground. I'd also like to see her upper shoulders and upper back slightly off the ground, hollow body position as she pushes one dumbbell up and then the other. Nice and controlled. What you're gonna get here is a great workout for your chest and triceps, but also for your abdominals. We're gonna move into a competing exercise, which is called a gorilla row. One reason I like this exercise so much is there's great activation of your hamstrings and glutes if you do it right, as well as your lats and biceps when you row. So what she's gonna do is take a fairly wide stance. We call this a sumo stance. She's going to squat and hinge at the hips. Notice how she's fighting to maintain a neutral spine. This is really important, especially when we're talking about weighted maneuvers. We wanna be braced here. She's gonna row one dumbbell up towards her rib cage, bring it down, and row the other. The stance here is really important. Strong in the legs, strong in her abs, so that we're not rounding the back. Notice how she pulls towards her hip instead of her shoulder. This prevents us from uh, over utilizing our upper traps, which in a lot of people are really stiff and uh, overactive. So we wanna make sure we're utilizing the lats. Third motion we're gonna do on a bench. You can do this on a chair or a table. It's just a simple dip. So she's gonna, Becca's gonna put her hands on the bench, step forward so that she's supporting her weight with her arms. Her butt is off the bench. She's gonna slowly lower herself to about 90 degrees and use her triceps to press herself back up. Again, control, this is what we want. Notice how the tempo she has on these reps, really nice. This is a tricep exercise primarily, pushing. 30 seconds of work and on to our fourth and final exercise, we are gonna do what's called a cobra. So we are going to lay on our stomach, on the ground. Again, posterior chain went from pushing no, to now more of a pulling motion. She's going to lift her thoracic spine, which that means kind of your mid upper back right here, off the ground. Look at that extension, okay? She's very tight throughout her spine, her hamstrings, her glutes. And we're gonna slowly lower ourselves back down. This will activate that entire uh, back region from your upper back down to your lumbar spine. Nice and controlled. And all you would need for this workout is a bench and a pair of dumbbells. You do not have dumbbells to perform the chest press. You could very easily substitute with a push-up. So I just have a couple questions. Does the weight matter? The weight is never as important as how well you handle it, meaning the tempo and the muscle activation is what we're going for. So as long as you feel like you're getting a good burn and you're working through that muscle in control, I'd rather have you use weight you can control Okay, that sounds good, Ryan. Thanks. All right, awesome. Well, you're looking pretty swole, and I think uh, we're ready to move on to our next episode. Great. Thanks so much for joining in. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Hello, we're back. Cool episode of Fuel Up, and I'm here with Claudia and Bibi from the San Miguel Resource Center. Ladies, thank you very much for being on set with us. Yeah. So happy to be here. Really thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. So nice to see you. <laughs> very nice to see you. So um, we're going to start out, if you wouldn't mind, yeah. tell us a little bit about San Miguel Resource Center, because one of the things that strikes me is that a lot of people think in a small cool resort town like Telluride that we don't have the kinds of issues that I think you deal with yeah. and there may be you know there may be some stigma associated with it there may be some yeah. reasons that people not only don't think we have the problems but there may be some reasons why they don't want to deal with it so mm -hmm. if you could just start out and tell me a little bit about the organization its history and its mission yeah well that's a great question um, at the San Miguel Resource Center we really advocate for and support all individuals affected by sexual assault and domestic violence, those are our main focuses, mm -hmm. but we do so much more as well. Um, and that's through you know, crisis intervention and um, helping meet immediate 
life <laughs> crisis needs. Um, and then like longer term supportive services mm -hmm. uh, for those survivors and their loved ones. Mm -hmm. That includes friends, family, whoever else could be affected because it isn't necessarily just the right. person who has been victimized. There is a much larger impact usually. Um, and then we also um, create social change through prevention education. Uh, so we're in, I think, nine schools in our region. Yeah, they're like Paradox. <clears throat> Nuka, Norwood, yep. Telluride High School, Telluride, like... Yeah, Ridgeway. Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of any others, but... Uh, yeah, doing programming on what is consent and healthy bodies, healthy communication, healthy sexuality, all mm -hmm. of that important stuff. Um, because it's important not to just intervene after something has already happened and try to control the sure. damage, but to stop um, things from happening in the first place right. and being on the other end and really um and so change. so so tell me just for my own yeah my own benefit yeah and perspective historically when did the san miguel resource center start and have you experienced a lot of growth in the in the services that you're providing and in the need for the services you're providing over the years when did it start i and we just talked about this because we had it I can't remember, but, but it's, been, it's been a while, like, yeah. like 20, 20, 20 years. plus years. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Almost 25. And it started, I think, <coughs> with um, community members mm -hmm. and kind of, um, you know, coming together and seeing the need in the mm -hmm. community. Yeah. Um, and I, I've been there for almost four years, so I've seen kind of go up and down. Mm -hmm. I think the more outreach we do, the more we get people to come in. And I think the mm -hmm. most important thing, because we do live in a very small community, um, confidentiality is right. huge and sure. having that trust and yeah. having to talk to those mm -hmm. clients and then having them feeling comfortable coming in mm -hmm. is super important. So there is definitely waves. It right. goes up and down, right. but we definitely stay busy. And yeah. so are people coming in to see, how, how does it work most often? Are people coming in to see you? Are they calling you? Is there a hotline, for example? Are you getting a lot mm -hmm. of feedback from the schools that you mm -hmm. said you're in? How do you, how do you think, is it, is, it, is it about just promoting awareness so that people understand and then they reach out to you? Or how does it work? Yeah, so much. Um, we do operate the only local 24-hour uh, helpline. Um, and we have amazing volunteers who staff that helpline after hours so that we don't have to take our work home with us, which is very important. Um, so we definitely get a lot of callers through that. Um, we rely on our community partners as well, and that might be law enforcement or the medical center or teachers mm -hmm. um, to make referrals to us. And sometimes they'll even bring someone in who they want us to speak with and who's interested in speaking with us. Um, or sometimes they just you know, give them our phone number. It's, how, whatever works for the client because mm -hmm. it's really like everything that we do is client driven so mm -hmm. however works for them right. if they don't want to come to the office and they want to meet us at the library we'll do that like we're open to well it's 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 obviously very serious business yeah and yet for your annual fundraiser the <laughs> chocolate lovers spring yeah. you have fun yeah right yeah. definitely you have fun. Fun. so can you tell us a little bit about that event what it's about when it is where yeah. it is and what you're hoping to achieve through the event this year yeah. yeah, I think the Chocolate Lovers Fling is one of our biggest fundraisers, and we've kind of changed it up as years have gone by. This will be my fourth one going mm -hmm. to, or fifth, I can't remember. Uh, you know, we started up here in <coughs> Mountain Village, yeah. and now we have it at the Sheridan. And that event is just kind of like to bring in our community partners, mm -hmm. people that come in that want to donate mm -hmm. and um, give back to us. Um, and this year, we are kind of focusing on therapy because we have a therapy assistance fund that we provide to mm -hmm. victims and survivors of you know any crime well mostly domestic violence and sexual assault um to access it so if we have more okay. money we're able to give more therapy cool. sessions yeah. to right. our uh, clients Good. yeah yeah and that's our focus for this year and we have seen our therapy rise dramatically as one of the services that's being accessed um, which is really cool because it means that people are actually reaching out and and trying to access support mm -hmm. and it also speaks to um, how mental health services have been destigmatized. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really great that uh, people are open and actually seeking it out actively and really um, wanting to pursue that. However, we went over budget like 180% this year. <laughs> so and that therapy is yeah. being provided by local, local regional th therapists. Yes, yep. right. okay. exactly. So Trained the professional yep. therapists. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Licensed. Okay. Um, and the client would choose who they would want to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and we would just uh, financially assist that. Right. Um, 
And so this year, the fling is this Saturday, yes. <laughs> February 8th. At the um, Sheridan. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and the theme this year, we have a theme every year. It's um, Wild West. So we're going to have a live band um, play a lot of covers of you know classic pop and rock songs as well just with a little mm -hmm. bit of a country twist mm -hmm. and um people are going to lead us in some line dancing uh and obviously like every year we're going to have amazing local chefs right. with all their creative creations with their yeah. chocolate creations yes. yep. <laughs> how did that tradition start do you know do you know how the chocolate connection began yeah that's I a great know. question it's actually um my understanding is that it is a domestic violence organiz like um organization theme. Mm -hmm. I, I don't okay. know where it started okay. from, but just, yeah, mm -hmm. I guess just a celebration mm -hmm. of <laughs> good. good, sweet things. Well, it's fun. You go in, yeah. dance, and yeah. get to try some yeah. awesome chocolates. Yeah. No, every year it's a great yeah. event. It's, yeah. one of, it's one of the sort of highlights, I think, because yeah. there's so many nonprofits in this community. Yeah. And there's so many of them out there doing fundraisers, mm -hmm. including Tay Ride TV. <laughs> yeah. And uh, to be able to sort of make your mark mm -hmm. on that calendar is yeah. a real achievement. And I think right. uh, yeah. San Miguel Resource Center has done that with the Chocolate Lovers Fling. Yeah. So I wish you guys well. I hope it goes really, really successfully. Thank you. And thank you for all your thank important you. work in the community. It's, it's vital. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Claudia and Bibi and San Miguel Resource Center are great examples of the kinds of rich local resources that make Telluride and Mountain Village such unique communities. Telluride TV is a local public access channel that also relies on community support and collaboration. I'd like to give a shout out to some of our most generous supporters, the town of Mountain Village, the town of Telluride through Case, the Telluride Ski and Golf Company, and the Telluride Foundation. Now let's join Zoe Donnell for another episode of Free Enterprise. Thank you, and this is Free Enterprise, where we have local businesses enter the studio for free and get a prize. Today I have John Girona with the Village Table joining us, and I can't wait to hear all about what Village Table has in store, but first, I want to start off with you and your history Good of morning. Telluride and your restauranteur adventures. Good morning, um, and thank you for having me. Uh, my story with food starts way back, but um, in Telluride, I moved here in 1987 and stayed, uh, came just to ski, and I stayed because I was a head chef at La Marmotte and got a great job there. And then I opened a catering business called Bread and Roses Catering mm -hmm. and was a uh, chef also up at All Rides for a little while in the winter time. And I also had a deli on Pacific Street called the Pacific Street Market. Wow. And that was for almost 10 years. Um, and then up at the Village Table, I opened that restaurant seven years ago. And um, it's going really well. And it's a Mediterranean uh, restaurant mm -hmm. with uh, Spanish tapas and an emphasis on Spanish cuisine. But we have a lot of things like Caesar salad and trout and salmon and steak and uh, uh, so healthy good. food. Yeah. yeah. So good variety. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a nice mix, I think. Yeah. So no, it's really good. Most of it's homemade. All our desserts are homemade and, mm -hmm. you know, in house and uh, French style cooking, but a yeah. lot of Spanish ingredients. And Is that your expertise since you started at La Vermont of just hearing French style? Yeah. I spent a little time uh, growing up in France and mm -hmm. Italy, where my mother was from, and Spain, where my dad was from. Okay. So it's really in my blood. and. I feel like a lot of yeah. chefs have that kind of background. Yeah. It's never, you know. It's all about The French food, and Italians, yeah. they know what they're doing. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So what brought on the Spanish influence? Well, my dad was from Spain, and so mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time growing up in Spain. Uh, we have family in uh, Madrid and Barcelona, and I still go every few years. Awesome. So you and keep your... So that's where that came from, and we have really great Italian food in, in Telluride, and so mm -hmm. I didn't want to compete with that and yeah. you know, do the same thing. Yeah, so. offer something different. Yeah. I know. I love going to Village Table, and it's... it's the tapas is perfect for a date or friends or yep. any of that sort of thing. So keeping along the lines of the menu, are you offering anything special now that, you know, We've that's been uh, new? playing around with crab cakes and oh, oysters yes. and, you know, doing some seafood things. We uh, This winter we have a new dish, uh, Mari Montaña, which is surf and turf. Nice, I like um, it. Yeah, <laughs> and so that's been going really well with lobster and, and oh. steak. 
Man. Um, and then we do, not every night, but, um, you know, specials, yeah. uh, entree specials pretty frequently. And then our soups are always homemade. Now we have a Tuscan white bean mm. that's vegan with olive oil and fresh herbs and oh, man. really nice. Yeah. God, I got to keep going back every time I... I see something new, so you gotta yeah, go back. We change keep up it up it. a little bit. The the main theme of the restaurant stays the same. Yeah. And some of the dishes, like the paella, is all you know. It's always been on the menu, mm -hmm. although we change it up a little bit. Um, yeah. What else? So. Yeah. No, it's so good. And so, what do you see? You know, for the future of Village Table. I know in the summertime you guys do a lot for us locals um, with your specials and the awesome patio space out front but do you see anything looking toward the summer and no and major changes mm -hmm. I, I we open and close twice a year which uh, makes it somewhat challenging for a business owner but mm -hmm. um we also have a fair amount of time off when we do that so that's you know helpful for right our, sanity yes <laughs> as a restaurateur yeah, yeah. We need yeah. that little break, and it's great to travel and, you know, go find food. And so if people want to hear more about Village Table, your menus or offerings, is there a website they can head to? They can or? go to thevillagetablerestaurant.com. Okay. Uh, our menus are up there, and uh, they can call the restaurant, and we always have to-go menus out front, and they can just stop in or make reservations. If it's a busy time of year, we recommend making a reservation. Always. Uh, we typically have live music on Mondays and Thursdays. Yes. It's a guitar player who's really great, Kirk Drogsvold. Yeah. Um, and he calls it uh, Alpine Flamenco. Ooh, I like it. Um, it yeah. It, so It's good ambiance. Yeah, it's really great. Yeah, I really like it. And just one last thing, where are you guys located so everybody knows? Uh, we are located uh, what I call the Conference Center Plaza, which is up in the Mountain Village, not in the main core, but one plaza over, mm -hmm. and it's between the Fairmont and the Peaks Hotel. Yeah, it's really easy yeah. to find. So thanks, John, oh, for welcome. all that. Thank you. Now so, you're making me hungry, and I'm going to have to go there for <laughs> dinner. And of course, so. we promise that you came here. Yeah. We put you on the spotlight. So you definitely get a prize. And All today, right. a Telluride TV Ooh, mug. Give me some cappuccino. Yes. All right. Well, thanks again, John. <laughs> Thank really you. Really appreciate it. All and right. that's it. <laughs>
Hi, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you. Well, first of all, because we haven't spoken to each other in like four years because I've been away. Mm -hmm. So uh, is it that long? It's well, pr three and a half ish, a little really? more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have so much to discuss, but first, I really want to know. Please tell us your Telluride story. How did you end up here in this valley? Uh, I I knew someone who had moved out here, mm -hmm. and I just I wanted a ski bum for a while. <laughs> And I, I all moved. these stories. Start yeah. the same. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There's there's some other sordid details, but uh, you know, a girl involved a little bit, but that right, that right. never worked out, and I ended up here and never left. Thank I left goodness. a couple times, brief stints here and there, but um, it just fit. Yeah. No, I loved it. It's a, it's amazing. It came from Maine. Yeah. And not that that's you know Maine's beautiful, but. This is this is good too. It's no telly ride. Uh, I'm so glad that it was a good fit and that you never left. And how long into your telly ride stint did you find the theater community, or did the theater community find you? How long did that? It take? was it was Brett Lovins. You remember Brett Lovins? No. no? Oh, he he. Um, I love to hear about Lovins. <laughs> Lovins. <laughs> he uh, he was getting involved with uh, Fiddler on the Roof in '98. So right. it was seven years. Uh -huh. And um, he was just right out of college, full of energy, like, hey, you're going to be in a show? And I was like, oh, I don't know. And I just, I was like, I was injured. I had, you know, I was auguring, but, you know, being injured in a ski town always stinks. And I was like, okay, this is a way to, to get out and do something. And it was great. The, everybody I met involved with the uh, Tired Repertory Theater was awesome. And yeah. I just loved it immediately and you found did, your home and did everything that came down the pike for a long time yeah Buff, you are an incredible actor and director you are so funny you're fun to work with and you're also i mean i just you have so many talents it's kind of sickening if i didn't love you so much i would probably <laughs> hate you because i'd be jealous but you're also you're an incredible <laughs> artist visual artist you're a painter and i know you best as being my collaborator in set yeah you guys building my my sets many sets you have built so many sets most recently you if you haven't seen Les Mis I hope you get a chance or, or get to see it um uh, the DVD of it because the SIF Young People's Theater has just produced a stellar production of Les Miserables Buff built the set it's great tell thank us, you tell us about your tell us please about your set building process how, I, you know, how do you make the magic Buff um well, one of the funnest aspects of it is getting to know a new story. Yeah. And Les Miserables is fantastic. Yeah. We, I started reading the book. I haven't finished it because I'm only, <laughs> I'm only 700 pages into it. <laughs> you just cracked it then. You're in the first quarter. <laughs> right? right, but it's been awesome all along. This, and mm -hmm. so that's so fun to, to do the research. And I've, <laughs> I've actually read... Um, a book on the French Revolution, a book on, on barricades, just to kind of wow. get into, just to, it's a fun way to learn about something new. Yes. It's part of the thing that really almost doesn't, isn't necessary because there have been sets where I've had no time and I'm like, I don't know what the show's about, but you need an entrance here and an entrance here. Right. That happens sometimes, but not with this one. So, right. so I'm able to, you know, really get into the story and the history. And so... Taking taking it from there, you get a feel of what what the show is talking about, and it's it's gloomy. <laughs> There's some really gloomy aspects yes. of this story. Yes. You know? How did the gloominess affect what what? How is gloominess represented in your design? Palette. <laughs> mm, definitely. <laughs> it's grays and dull and muted tones because mm. it's um, 1830s, 18 early 1800 Paris, and it was. Um, there's some miserable things going on. It's kind of miserable. So, but then beyond that, it's, um, you know, I just, it's a collaboration with the director and, mm. and getting like, what do you need? What are we focusing on? Cause the script is different than the book and it's, yeah. you know, and then not all directors stick exactly with the script. I think you have to with Les Mis. I think the rights are really strict, but yeah. it, you know, it's not like. A play of yours where it's like, oh, we threw out those characters, we added five more, and broke like, a few okay, copyright laws in there, but who's <laughs> counting? Um, 
<laughs> well, I am. This is. Uh, I would love the answer to this question because I really don't what? know it. Even though we have collaborated so many times and I've seen dozens and dozens of your sets and appreciated them, what's your least favorite set you've ever built and your favorite? Oh boy, what comes to mind? <laughs> Um, or you could just pick one of the two. I can't pick one. Well, uh, the my favorite ones, the best one I did was Footloose. It just was tight. It yeah. was, as a picture, it was perfect. Yeah. Um, I think the funnest one was Funny Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. Yeah, that was Because that was goofy as all get out. The whole ideas behind that set were so fun. Yeah. Because I remember it was, uh, I thought to myself, okay, you know, we know the Corinthian column and the Doric and the Ionic, but all the architecture in this neighborhood, no one knows because it sucked and <laughs> and, <laughs> and it fell out. You know, it never made it. It was like the Edsel or something, you know what I mean? So I made all I this remember. bogus, like, Greek architecture. <laughs> yes! Your own invention of Greek architecture, I remember. And yeah, I mean, I, it had hints of the other stuff, but it was in places that didn't work. It was, like, terrible. You know, and the one guy had like retrofitted his building with a column that went up and then out and then up again. Like, no, that's not how a column works, but that's what he did because he was trying to keep pace with the, the well, times. That's why your sets are so great and so <laughs> unique is because you come up with this I entire backstory and yeah. you, you have you put so much innovation and ingen ingenuity. A lesser well, set designer would just probably do some research and copy what had been done before, but you always take it to the next level. I've had lesser sets. <laughs> I can't remember the bad ones because I don't want Neither, to. Well, there are no bad ones. I more meant like which was the most challenging. That would uh, have been the best, best question. Best way to phrase that question. Oh, there's been plenty of challenges. Like <laughs> Mary Poppins was four backdrops. Oof. Backdrops, that's a lot of painting. And in the opera house, it doesn't yeah. have a fly tower. Right, yeah. No. <laughs> Buff Hooper, you are no stranger to challenge, no stranger to innovation. You are a creative wonder. Well, thanks, Jen. Yeah. You are too. Thank you very much. <laughs> it it's was so, fun. It's so much you, fun. You did such a great job with the, the theater. Oh, I, I oh, think I especially loved how you wrote in just brilliant additions to certain certain things well you and i mystery both... at von wrinkle mansion <laughs> you and i both like to mix it up yeah no it's fun you had to because you had so many kids and yeah. the, the gemstones hmm. right didn't you write in the gemstones i did things? write in the yeah. gemstones we could go on and on but speaking Good. of mixing it up it's time to go on to our promo piece to an, a wonderful local restaurant the village table and then on to our report card so thanks so much buff yeah thank you Hi, my name is Johnny Girona. I'm the owner operator of the Village Table Restaurant. It's a Mediterranean inspired food with a lot of Spanish influences. We're open for dinner six days a week in the summer, seven in the winter. Dinner service can be very casual where you come in and have a tapas or two at the bar or uh, you can sit down and have a two to three hour dining experience with a couple tapas and a salad and entrees and a dessert. Our wine list is about 100 to 120 bottles and we have a great sangria, red and white. The paella is our signature dish, I'd say, and then the trout, which is one of the best dishes that you can have anywhere, I think. It's family friendly and we have super uh, guitar player that plays a couple times a week. I'm excited for you to join our family and have a great experience at the Village Table Restaurant. Hi, my name is Gemma Andrew and I'm a junior at Telyard High School and this is The Report Card, a show about things that I think matter. Hi, welcome back to The Report Card. Today I'm here with my journalism teacher, Laurel Henderson. Thanks for joining us today. Hi Gemma, thanks for having me. Um, so I just had a couple of questions about the Telyard School newspaper. So some questions like, what are you expecting this year? What have you done? Well, this is my first year teaching journalism here at Telluride High School, and I really wanted to help expand the program. So we started with a website this year and changed the name. The students voted on uh, THS today. So we started with a website, and um, people can go to see that at thstoday.com. Um, and then part of my goal was to have a 
paper publication and that helps students um, expand and have an authentic audience for their writing. And so I partnered up with the Daily Planet and we, our first paper publication came out um, in December. And it was printed as an insert on a Sunday edition, which was really awesome. I was just so proud of you guys, um, as you know, as one of our star students and writers. Um, and we're going to have three more paper publications this year. That's very exciting. So what kind of stories do the students write about? We focus a lot on what's going on at the school, naturally. But basically, I'm open to whatever students want to write as long as they're interested in it and it's relevant and timely. Um, and I think that writing about things you're interested in helps really students become more engaged with the whole process. Um, so what is your connection to journalism? Well, I myself uh, love writing. I write all the time. And I used to be a journalist. I wrote for the uh, Daily Times Call in Longmont, Colorado and also helped uh, run the journalism program at Aspen High School before moving to Telluride. Perfect. Well, up at Telluride TV, we like to hear everyone's Telluride story, so what's yours? My mom moved to Norwood uh, when I was 15, and that was quite a while ago now. So I recently moved back a couple years ago and had many stints um, here, obviously, and in the area, I left to go to college and moved back, and then I moved to Ecuador, and then I moved back, and I'm just really thrilled to be a part of Telluride High School and um, certainly very proud of the journalism students. And what does your family think about the Telluride School newspaper? Have they read it? Oh, yes. Uh, everyone in my family is quite proud of, of my students' work, and uh, as, I, as I am I, and, you know, I just really feel like the community welcomed us because we raised the money uh, through selling ad space to do the pi paper publications. So that was really awesome to see the community come together and uh, basically fund the paper edition. So that was uh, quite the accomplishment. Students went out, as again, as you know, and asked um, local businesses to buy ad space in order to uh, have this wonderful opportunity. And what does the THS Today staff look like and how many students participate in this class? We have about 14 uh, staff writers and that includes some editors as well. Um, everyone has to wear a lot of different hats in terms of taking pictures and um, helping edit stories. Uh, what was your other question? Uh, how many students participate in the class? Yep, so about 14, yes, thank you. Uh, we lost a couple due to early graduations, which I'm very excited for them, and we gained a few along the way. So we have a good, solid foundation of writers and um, just really blossoming into young journalists. Well, perfect. Thanks for coming in and meeting with us today, Ms. Laurel. Thank you, Ms. Gemma, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, and thank you for watching. Welcome back, everyone. Cool little piece with our, our student intern, yes, Gemma Andrew, right? that's so great. Yeah, it's really nice to have her here, having, have her working with us. Yes. Students just bring that certain youthful energy that I love. Always a good thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Jen, for now, Almost Live is? Almost over. But if you missed part of the show, Never Fear, Almost Live airs every morning, noon, and night on Channel 1304 in Telluride and online worldwide. Yeah, we have all of our content uh, on our website at TayRideTV.org. You can stream what we're programming every day, or you can go into our archival content and see masterpieces from days of old. Yeah. A lot of youth theater production pieces involving awesome. Jen Julia Nyman. Thank you. And lots of mountain film interviews, Tayride Film Festival interviews, old-fashioned shows, old music concerts, all kinds of wonderful stuff. So cool. check it out at TayRideTV.org or catch us on social at TV. And for now, bye everyone. See you next week. Thanks bye. for watching. Thank you. And so we banter now as we cut this roll. Right. That was yeah. probably better that one. Yeah. yeah. yeah.